Here are five essential bank accounts that you should have to keep your money organized. The first bank account you should have is just a main checking account. This is the one account that everybody should have at the bare minimum if you are an absolute beginner. This is the only account where money should come in. So basically all of your paychecks are coming into this one account. This is also the account that pays for all of your normal bills. So that would include any housing expenses that you have per month, including your mortgage or your rent and your insurance. This would also include if you have any debt that you're paying off. So that would be student loans or credit card debts or a car loan. And for your housing, that would be any utilities. So gas or electricity or water or trash. Really what you can think about is if you have any bills that are on auto pay that can come out of this account. The reason why this account is so important is this is where the majority of your expenses will come out of, including if you have a credit card, it would be paid out of from this account. Or if you don't have a credit card and you're using this bank account just as a checking account, then the rest of your day-to-day -day purchases can also come out of this account. So that would include any groceries or any home purchases that you're making or fun money or eating out. Anything that you would normally charge on a day-to-day -day basis would come out of this account. The second account you should have should be a short-term sinking funds savings account. So this one is a little bit different than that first account in that that first account was a checking account. This one is going to be a savings account. The difference between a savings account and a checking account is that in a checking account, for the most part, you can have unlimited withdrawals within that account. Whereas a savings account, usually you're capped at a, a max number of withdrawals that you can make per month. The reason banks do that is that they give you a higher interest rate for that money that they know you're not going to be pulling out of more than six or so times per month. Whereas a checking account, they usually have a lower interest rate, but they know that you're going to be taking that money out more and more. With that being said, your money in your checking account isn't meant to be there to make money off of. It's just there for you to spend on a day-to-day -day basis. Whereas a savings account, you're probably not going to be dipping into multiple times a month, certainly not more than like six or so times per month. So it can be accumulating more interest in that savings account. But those sinking funds can be anything that you are saving for in the short term. So if you want to check out my seven essential sinking funds video is super helpful if you want to learn more about this. But these could include things that you're saving for like your vacation, if you are saving for any medical things. And actually somebody in the comments of that video suggested that maybe saving in an HSA or an FSA if you qualify for that. This could also be a holiday fund, a moving fund if you're planning on moving soon. I talked a lot more about this in that video. Video. So definitely check that out if you want to get more info on that. And also check the comments of that video because a lot of you guys left some really good suggestions for sinking funds that I didn't talk about in that video. My suggestion for your savings account for your sinking funds is that if you are starting out to just start out with one account that houses all of the money for all of your sinking accounts. And then if you are comfortable with that one account and if you want a little bit more organization, you can split it up into two or more accounts so that you can organize all of your different sinking funds a little bit better so, so that you know exactly what's in each fund. But I really do think it's wise to just start out with one and I'll talk about that later in the video as well. The third bank account that you should have is a long-term sinking funds savings account. So those short-term sinking funds are going to be anything from three to six to maybe one year of something you are saving for. Whereas a long-term sinking fund is going to be something that you're saving for for one, two, up to five, ten years in the future. Things like that could be a car fund or a car down payment fund if you know you're going to be needing a car in the near future or even bigger than that is going to be a down payment on a home long-term sinking fund. The fourth bank account you should have is an emergency fund and this should be in a savings account because you shouldn't be accessing it more than six or so times per month. This account and this fund is going to be the top priority among beginner savers and that is because having a solid emergency fund is going to prevent you from dipping into the money that's in your main banking account that's made for normal day-to-day -day expenses and and it's also significantly more important than saving for things in the future since things that are happening in an emergency are happening in the here and now. Things that are absolutely necessary for you to use your emergency fund on would be any medical emergencies. So that would be a surgery or an illness. That could be job loss. This could be money that you could use in case you lost your job. This could be home repair emergencies. So if you had something happen to your roof or if you were to have any car issues. So all of those things said, anything that is an absolute emergency, anything that you literally could not do your normal day-to-day -day life if you did not have it fixed. And the last essential bank account that you're going to need is an investments account. So this is an all-encompassing bank account that includes your brokerage account and it also includes if you have any retirement accounts. So oftentimes if you have a retirement account with an employer that's going to be separate from an IRA or a Roth IRA or your normal brokerage account but this investments account is going to be separate from the rest of your bank accounts. More likely than not your investments accounts are going to be with 
with a financial institution and your bank accounts are going to be with a bank. But within those investments accounts, what a great place to get started is just having a Roth IRA or an IRA for your retirement accounts and then maybe even a brokerage account which is going to be investments that aren't restricted by any retirement stipulations but are just there for investing. So a few questions that probably come up when you are thinking about what bank accounts you're going to be needing. And the first question is why only five? Why not more? Why not less? And my motto is going to always be to keep it simple. A lot of times it's often difficult to organize all of your money and all of your net worth goals with, with just one checking account. So a few extra savings accounts or maybe even an additional checking account is going to help you better organize and put money in other places so that you know this money is all for my short-term savings goals. This is all for my long-term savings goals. However, having any more than five, six, seven, whatever that number works for you can, can, can actually create an absolute headache. And on top of that, when you have so many accounts that you're trying to manage and juggle, there are always overdraft fees from the bank if you were to try and charge more from that bank account than you do have. And the question to ask yourself is, if you're having trouble keeping up with all of your different bank accounts, then you probably have too many. But that's only a question that you're going to be able to answer. This five bank accounts is only a place to get you started. And really, these different bank accounts are going to act like digital cash envelopes. So instead of you having a physical envelope in your home, you're ha actually keeping all of that money in the bank and it's digital. So what if these five bank accounts don't work for me? Just like in my seven essential sinking funds video, you'll need to figure out what works for you. These five bank accounts are just a place for you to get started. And what works for you is going to take time. Like I said, these five bank accounts are just a place for you to get started. The last thing I would want you guys to go do is just to automatically go open five bank accounts right now. Start small and figure out what works for you. And even though figuring out how many bank accounts you're going to be needing is going to take some time, don't give up. The worst thing that you could do is just give up six weeks into figuring out how your bank accounts work. If something is not working, that's your motivation to try something else. Bank accounts are so personal and they're going to take trial and error to figure out what works for you because what works for you may or may not work for somebody else. For example, over the course of being married, which has not been that long, has not even been six months, we have changed our bank accounts probably six times. And I still don't even think our bank accounts right now are fully exactly where we want them to be. But right now what is working for us is having that main checking account. We have three accounts for short-term sinking funds, and that includes our car maintenance fund, our house maintenance fund, and also a vacation fund. And then we, on top of that, we have two other bank accounts for more long-term purchases. Besides what's in our bank account, we also have our investments within our Fidelity accounts. So at this point, what bank do you pick? The goal is to keep it simple. If you're already using a bank that you know and you love, stick with that bank. There is no reason for you to switch banks if you found something you love. However, if you're at a bank that you don't really like, or there are some things that they do that you aren't fond of, now's the time to switch it. Where you do your banking is not a permanent decision unless you want it to be. The only thing I would suggest is to keep all of your bank accounts within one bank and not keep one account in bank A, one account in, a in bank B, and one account in bank C. That is going to absolutely drive you bonkers and just be an absolute headache. So for simplicity reasons, I would suggest keeping all of your bank accounts in one bank so that when you open that app up or when you pull it up on your computer, you can see where all of your money is at least everything except for your investments. Personally, what we do is keep our monthly budget in our main checking account. And then we also have savings accounts for all of our sinking funds. And all of those accounts, all four of those are all within USAA. And that's personally where we do our banking. Anything else that we are not using for that month that is not in any sinking fund and we transfer all of that money to Fidelity to potentially be invested or sometimes we just have money sitting there. But for us and what I've figured out psychologically, it is very difficult for us to keep a large amount of money within our bank account. It helps us to have that money out of sight, out of mind, in a separate place because then we're not tempted to go spend that money. Once you have figured out what bank accounts work for you and where you're going to keep them, the next step you could potentially make is to move your emergency fund into a high yield savings account. A high yield savings account is going to be a savings account just like you have with your bank. However, a lot of times banks that are online have higher interest rates because they don't have brick and mortar banks, you're going to get a higher interest rate for your money within those banks. This is not a necessary step. This is just one way you could potentially make more interest, but that interest is not going to be worth it to you if it creates an added extra headache if you don't like having your money in another bank. So for all of these accounts, should you use a checking account or should you use a savings account? So like I said before, the difference is between a checking and a savings account. With a savings account, you are restricted with the number of withdrawals that you make per month. With a checking account, you're not. So figure out how many withdrawals you're probably going to make per month in those accounts. Your main account should always be a checking account. Most likely all of your 
your sinking funds and your emergency fund should be in a savings account. But whatever you do, make sure you double check that those accounts that you're getting have no maintenance fees. These are fees that the banks charge you just for keeping your money at their bank. But there are plenty of banks out there that do not have maintenance fees. So double check and make sure that those bank accounts that you're looking at do not have maintenance fees. And on top of those maintenance fees, make sure that they don't have any minimum requirements. Sometimes banks require you to keep a minimum amount of money in each bank account, which is going to further restrict you and further your headache in your money management. So just watch out for those minimum balances. A lot of bank accounts only require you to have $25 or so, and that's a good place to start at, but just watch out for those minimum balance requirements. The world is going to tell you that you need to complicate things, that you that you should have this, that you need to do this, that you should have 20 bank accounts to keep all of your money organized. And what I really want you guys to do is just is to forget about all of that. Keep it simple. How you manage your money is going to be personal to you and stay within what you can handle. This video right here is my seven essential sinking funds video. I think you will really, really enjoy that video if you like this video. Thank you guys so much for subscribing and liking this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.